path is one in 20,000. An interstellar visitor with a trajectory so improbable, it defies all our models. This is 3, E Atlas. Its brightness profile is so extreme, it presents two impossible scenarios. Is it a colossal 20 kilometer body, far larger than we ever expected? Or a smaller object that somehow generates its own light? Scientists are now in a race to find the answer. Using spectroscopy, thermal measurements, and orbital data, we're testing these competing hypotheses. Less than one in 20,000 interstellar paths should graze Mars and swing near Jupiter while staying only about five degrees off the ecliptic. That striking track belongs to 3I Atlas, first reported by the Atlas Sky Survey on July 1st, 2025. Importantly, that one in 20,000 figure is a calculated probability from current statistical models. It is an estimate, not a fixed rule, and it reflects ongoing research rather than certainty. Adding to the puzzle, Hubble shows a brightness profile so steep it could mean either a natural body around 20 kilometers wide, much larger than expected, or a smaller object that somehow generates its own light. Both scenarios appear extreme, which is why astronomers are paying close attention. In this video, we will step through what makes interstellar visitors distinct, recall the first two cases we have observed, explore the brightness and orbital puzzles of 3i Atlas, and see how scientists are preparing tests that can weigh competing hypotheses. To begin, we need to understand what sets an interstellar object apart the moment it is discovered. What makes an interstellar visitor? Different astronomers can often identify an interstellar object very quickly because of the track it follows through space. Almost every asteroid or comet in our solar system moves in a closed, repeating orbit around the Sun. In contrast, interstellar visitors travel on what is called a hyperbolic trajectory, an open path that passes through once and does not remain bound to the Sun. Scientists detect this by measuring the object's speed against the Sun's escape velocity. If the motion is fast enough to break free permanently, the object must have originated beyond the Sun's gravitational influence. These paths come with higher entry speeds than solar system bodies usually show. An interstellar visitor may arrive moving at over 200,000 kilometers per hour, far quicker than the typical bound comets that cruise tens of thousands of kilometers per hour. That excess velocity is a direct byproduct of its unbound orbit. While comets in our system slow at their farthest points and stay tethered by gravity, outsiders conserve the extra energy that propels them in and then carries them away. This difference in pace is often among the first signals sky surveys look for when they realize they may be witnessing something rare. The first confirmed case arrived in 2017 with one E, Oumuamua. It showed no tail or coma and its light curve implied an elongated form, swinging several times longer than it was wide. At the time, it was difficult to explain how something with that shape and motion could be purely natural. Hypotheses ranged from a splintered fragment of a planet to a thin shard of rock and some speculative ideas pushed even further. Two years later in 2019, the second object, 2i slash Borisov, was discovered. Unlike Oumuamua, Borisov behaved like a classic comet. Sunlight warmed its surface, releasing gas and dust, and producing both a coma and a dust telltale that telescopes tracked with ease. These two examples provided the first reference points for astronomers. Oumuamua was unusual, without a tail and with a puzzling shape. Borisov looked textbook cometry. Taken together, they created an early range of behaviors interstellar objects could show, but they did not yet amount to a statistical baseline. With only two samples, scientists could not say what was normal or rare. Even so, the contrast revealed that interstellar visitors could be either unexpectedly strange or comfortably familiar. So, when 3i Atlas was announced, researchers immediately compared it with those earlier benchmarks. If it aligned with Borisov, scientists might have felt more confident that most interstellar wanderers resemble conventional comets. If it instead leaned toward the strangeness of Oumuamua, debate over possible natural versus non-natural explanations would have sharpened. Initial data, however, suggested that 3i Atlas did not fit neatly into either category. It earned attention so quickly because this mismatch stood out. The object seemed to sit in a space between the two known cases while at the same time showing features that neither Oumuamua nor Borisov displayed. In effect, the early comparisons told astronomers that something new was at play, something that extended the spectrum of what interstellar objects might be, 
and forced researchers to reconsider those first benchmarks. That broader context is why the brightness record from 3i Atlas became an immediate point of focus. Once its light curve was tracked closely by one of our most reliable space observatories, the data revealed an unexpected pattern that demanded explanation. The brightness puzzle. Too big or self-luminous? The central issue that came into focus was brightness. Specifically, a profile recorded by the Hubble Space Telescope that looked far steeper than expected. The measurement relied on the object's light curve, the simple record of how its brightness changes with time and distance. And in this case, the decline did not match the gentle fading usually traced by comets. Instead, the drop was abrupt, forcing astronomers to consider whether the body was either unusually large or possibly generating some of its own light. The mainstream interpretation remains straightforward. Sunlight reflecting off dust, gas, or ice particles surrounding the core. Under that assumption, model fits to the Hubble data suggest an effective diameter close to 20 kilometers, depending on how reflective the surface is assumed to be. This would make 3i Atlas an order of magnitude larger than either Oumuamua or Borisov. For an interstellar object, such a size is remarkable. On a local scale, it may not compare with moons or planets, but encountering a piece of rock or ice that wide drifting between stars is comparable to suddenly spotting a freighter where only rowboats had previously passed. The challenge is that statistical studies of material moving between stars predict such a find to be extremely rare. Objects tens of kilometers across should be both uncommon to form and unlikely to survive unbroken across interstellar distances. In fact, estimates suggest that a body this massive might only enter the solar system once in many thousands of years. That makes the giant fragment interpretation possible, but far from comfortable. This is why an alternative hypothesis was considered, though it is treated cautiously. In this scenario, 3i Atlas may be self-luminous, producing light from within rather than relying solely on reflection. If correct, the object could be far smaller, perhaps only a few hundred meters across, removing the improbably large size requirement. But this hypothesis introduces its own serious difficulties. To account for the brightness seen at such distances, the output would need to be on the order of 10 gigawatts of power, comparable to the capacity of a large modern power plant or the round-the-clock consumption of a major city. No natural cometry process is known to sustain that kind of energy release in vacuum. That makes intrinsic emission a speculative explanation, not a consensus view. There are other physical processes that could shorten the brightness profile without invoking self-luminosity. For instance, unusual dispersal of dust, extended but faint halos, or rapid fragmentation of surface ice could steepen the observed curve in ways not yet fully modelled. These explanations remain within known comet physics, though they still stretch the usual assumptions because Hubble's curve showed such a sharp decline. Scientists thus face a choice between an unusually massive fragment, a demanding set of dust and ice dynamics, or a less conventional mechanism that produces light directly. None is straightforward, and that is why no single solution has yet closed the debate. What remains clear is that brightness alone has pushed astronomers toward uncomfortable extremes. On one side stands the unlikely prospect of a 20-kilometer body wandering in from deep space. On the other is a hypothesis that requires a sustained energy output no comet has ever demonstrated. Between these lies the possibility of as yet underexplored surface or dust effects each path carries uncertainties, and none can yet fully explain the Hubble observations. To gain further clarity, astronomers turned next to chemistry. By examining the spectrum of light reflected from its surface, they looked for elemental and molecular fingerprints that could tie three eye atlas to familiar processes, or suggest something more unusual. Those results added another layer of complexity, and together with the object's peculiar orbital route, they deepened the questions about what kind of visitor we are truly witnessing. Ice from another star and a strange cosmic route. What drew equal attention alongside the brightness record were measurements of its chemistry and path. This is where ice from another star and a strange cosmic route comes into focus. Spectroscopic observations with facilities like Gemini South and NASA's Infrared Telescope Facility, IRTF, allowed astronomers to spread the object's light into its component wavelengths. In doing so, they identified signatures of water ice alongside rocky silicates and carbon-rich minerals. 
These are the same basic ingredients seen in our own solar system's comets and planet-forming disks, but here they appear carried in from a stellar environment far away. The appeal of this finding is straightforward. The ice may act as a time capsule. If it is chemically untouched, then its water and minerals could preserve the fingerprint of a planetary system that formed long before our own. But this result comes with caution. Material drifting through interstellar space for millions of years can accumulate thin coatings from cosmic dust and gas. The observed spectra could therefore be showing a pristine interior frozen billions of years ago, or just altered surface layers picked up during the journey. These are competing hypotheses, and scientists emphasize that the data cannot yet resolve which is correct. Even with this uncertainty, the ability to read chemical traces from such distances is unusual. Normally, the only way to examine matter from another planetary system would be to send a probe there, a task that is far beyond current technology. In this case, the messenger arrived on its own, and simply by splitting its light, researchers gained a direct line of evidence about processes in a star-forming region we are unlikely ever to visit. For planetary science, such remote spectroscopy provides a rare window into conditions of planet and comet birth outside the solar system. Trajectory analysis offered a second surprise. Calculations show that 3I Atlas is moving on a retrograde orbit, opposite to the motion of most planets, while tilted only about 5 degrees from the ecliptic plane. That combination, nearly aligned but reversed, is improbable for a random interstellar path. More striking are its planetary encounters. According to recent analyses, the object will pass within about 29 million kilometers of Mars on October 3rd, reach closest approach to the Sun at 1.35 astronomical units on October 29th, and later swing within about 33 million kilometers of Jupiter. The odds of a single interstellar visitor brushing past three major planets in one trip are calculated to be around 0.005%, or about 1 in 20,000. That figure does not mean impossible, but it does mark the geometry as highly unlikely. This rarity has led to a range of interpretations. For most researchers, the mainstream view holds 3. I Atlas is a comet-like body whose chemistry and orbit reflect the tail end of natural processes, even if several of those processes are rare. A smaller group of authors have proposed more speculative hypotheses, such as the idea that the timing of its trajectory resembles a deliberate maneuver, or that its brightness points to self-luminosity. Under this view, the path near Mars, perihelion, and Jupiter could be compared to a guided course but the majority of astronomers emphasize that extraordinary assumptions are not required. Statistical outliers occur naturally, and selection effects in how we search can bias what we find. The contrast between these positions shows the fork in the road. One interpretation explains the observations as rare but natural, while the other invokes engineered or self-powered behavior. Both are hypotheses, but they differ in how much new physics or energy sources they require. The consensus remains that natural descriptions should be exhausted before alternatives can carry weight. These debates sharpen the next question, how to test which explanation survives direct measurement. The spectroscopy and orbital analysis set up strong claims, but what comes next is to distinguish whether 3 I Atlas is simply venting gas and dust like a comet, or if light is indeed being produced from within. Testing the hypotheses, comet outgassing or something else, to address the competing ideas, astronomers have focused on clear predictions that can be tested with upcoming observations. The natural comet hypothesis suggests that as 3, I Atlas moves closer to the Sun, sunlight should warm its surface, drive sublimation of buried ices, and release gases along with dust. Brightness would then rise in step with solar heating, and spectra should reveal volatile signatures such as cyanogen. Thermal measurements in the infrared should match a body reflecting and re-radiating sunlight. The self-illumination hypothesis puts forward a different picture. Brightness would not depend strongly on solar input. No matching volatile lines would appear, and the infrared radiation would show less heat than expected from sunlight alone. The divide between these outcomes gives scientists a chance to use direct measurement to rule one scenario out. Evidence available so far leans toward normal cometary behavior. Estimates indicate a dust production rate of about 6 to 60 kilograms per second, with ejection velocities between roughly 20 and 2,000 meters per second. Both numbers sit comfortably inside the ranges measured for solar system comets. 
For many researchers, this supports the view that 3i Atlas is behaving as an active comet should. But there is also a gap. No clear detections of typical volatile gases have been reported, even though activity at this scale usually produces visible spectral lines. Cyanogen and other carbon-bearing species normally appear as soon as solar heating increases. Their absence raises questions, though astronomers note one caveat. Many comets only show strong gas emission when they are closer to the Sun than 3i Atlas has been during early observations, often within about three astronomical units. Since some measurements were made when the object was still near Jupiter's distance, any gas release may have been too faint to stand out. The upcoming period of stronger heating will therefore be critical. Perihelion on October 29th is the pivot point for this test. At that time, solar input peaks, meaning gas activity should be at its strongest if the comet hypothesis is correct. Detecting volatile emissions during this passage would add the confirmation that has so far been lacking. On the other hand, if the object remains bright without producing those spectral lines, astronomers will have to take a harder look at why the usual signals are missing. Comparing its changing visible light brightness with its thermal evolution across this passage provides a practical way to separate sunlight reflection from a possible internal source. Other instruments are prepared to add data points. The James Webb Space Telescope can measure the object's infrared spectrum and temperature profile. If the heat balance matches passive comet physics, the case for normal outgassing gains strength. If Webb records excess warmth that does not fit reflective heating, it would lend weight to the self-illumination hypothesis. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter offers a third path of evidence. During the early October flyby, it may capture high-resolution images. Those pictures could show whether a bright central nucleus is venting jets, consistent with classic comet activity, or whether instead the glow is extended and diffuse, hinting at an alternative explanation. Each method, perihelion spectroscopy, Webb's infrared checks, and orbital imaging, provides a distinct test of the competing predictions. Together, they will triangulate the object's physical nature in ways earlier interstellar visitors never allowed. The self-illumination hypothesis remains the most demanding. To explain observed brightness that way requires the object to emit at a sustained power of about 10 gigawatts on the scale of an entire metropolitan power grid. For a small interstellar fragment drifting in vacuum, no conventional model explains how such energy could be produced or maintained. This requirement is why mainstream opinion holds back from endorsing the idea. Extraordinary evidence would be needed to make it viable. At the end of these tests, one scenario may prove inconsistent with the data. By building clear predictions for what each hypothesis should reveal, astronomers give themselves a structured way to decide whether the outcome points to a natural comet with rare features or to something harder to categorize. The process itself shows how unusual evidence forces astronomy to refine its approach. Conclusion. The consensus view is that 3i Atlas is most likely a natural interstellar comet. Its unusual steep brightness profile and low probability trajectory highlight the limits of existing models, but they do not require extraordinary explanations. What they do demand is sharper observational methods and stronger statistics so that future discoveries can be placed in proper context. That is where the next generation of surveys comes in. The Vera C. Rubin Observatory is expected to detect dozens of interstellar objects per year. With that larger sample, astronomers will finally be able to build a statistical baseline to separate the rare, but natural, from the genuinely anomalous. Key takeaway, this object is a live example of the scientific method in action. Propose hypotheses, make predictions, and use targeted observations to test them. If you'd like careful updates on how these observations unfold, consider subscribing. And if you have questions, Share them in the comments so we can keep the discussion evidence-focused.